it's time to join Gary Gold with Momentum Masterclass. Welcome to Momentum Masterclass. I'm Masekho Mapunyani, and as always, I'm joined by Assistant Springbok Coach Gary Gold. Last week, we took a look at the new law interpretation at the breakdown, and this week, we'll be taking a look at the law interpretation from the lineout because apparently the policing is a lot more strict. Well, it is, it is, Maps, and we've spoken a little bit about uh, in previous Momentum Masterclasses about that we're going to cover all four of the new law interpretations this year. This one, as you say, is around about the lineout, and it's about the obstruction at the lineout. Yeah. So uh, let's take a look and see. We get some expert advice on this one, and let's see what the experts have to say about it. John, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank we're here down at Wymac Boys, and we, we, we want to ask you a couple of questions about the law. Um, what we're really doing is we've had some requests from high school coaches who've had some doubts about the new law interpretations. Of course, it's not a new law, it's just it's, it's a law that's been, been in law for a while, it's just the interpretation thereof. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the obstruction in the line-out mall. Um, why don't you give us your most important points that you guys are looking at when a team is setting a mall uh, and, and what, what is deemed an obstruction and what's, what's not deemed an obstruction? Okay, so Gary, um, there's basically three uh, different scenarios. The first one is where uh, the supporter gets in the way of the defenders and gets himself between the defender and the jumper. All right, I the, the second one is the, the what we call the sacrificial lamb who gets thrown into the back so that a maul is able to be formed uh, easy, more easily. Right. And the third one is uh, to do with transfer of the ball, that it must take place once contact has been made rather than after the contact has been made. I understand. So, of course, the line-out jumper comes down. If he transfers the ball to the guy coming in to rip it before the opposition team have made, engaged with him, he's actually, he's actually obstructing. Yes, he's, he? yes, he's liable to penalty. Okay, so let's have a look at the three scenarios that Jonathan's spoken about and let's hear Jonathan's comments while they're in practice. Okay, so here we've seen the formation of the mall. Jono, anything wrong with this? Yeah. Basically, the number three has got in the, in the road of the uh, defenders. He has to stay in line with the jumper, the ball carrier, uh, before he makes contact with the opposition, and they, thereby be, uh, he'd be legal. Okay, so at the moment, he's basically forming a buffer, therefore he's, he's, he's blocking them, and it's causing obstruction. And yeah, it's, it's, easier, it's easier to set up a mall if he does this kind of action. That's why they do it. Uh, and it's more difficult for the opposition to counter anything if, the, if he's in the road. Okay, perfect. Let's have a look at the next scenario. Yes. Okay, stop. Okay. And what's happened is the number three's come through the line-out. He's taken away opposition players once again in order to facilitate an easy setup, and he, but an illegal setup of the more going forward. So he'd be liable to penalty. And even if he gets out like he's done over here, he spent enough time in there to cause an obstruction, am correct, I right? Correct. First of all, he's gone through the line-out, which he's not allowed to do. And secondly, he's made contact with players ahead of the ball carrier, which he's also not allowed to do. Okay, so again, long-arm penalty, obstruction. Yes. Okay, let's have a look at the third scenario. Yes. Okay. John, that didn't look like there's anybody blocking over here, but what was wrong with that mall? No, uh, there wasn't anyone blocking, but what happened was the ball was transferred to a player behind the ball carrier before contact was made with the opposition. Right. So therefore, it's also obstruction and liable to penalty. Okay, and the same situation as before, except for that there's not a guy coming through here. The jumper himself is actually obstructing. Correct. This whole, this whole band of three players in front is obstructing because the ball carrier, once they made contact, the ball carrier was already behind them. Okay, and the guy coming in to receive the ball, if he stayed bound to him and he still had his hands on the ball? Yes, if he's, if he's, still, if two, if he's got his hands on the ball plus somebody else, then it's okay. They, they, this player must have contact with the ball though. I think again, proper coaching method should be that your body positions are square, you're square to the target that you're looking to drive at, and if you get the numbers behind the ball effectively and you work together as a unit, not dissimilar to the scrum, I'm sure you're gonna have an effective more. Well, I'm sure that's made it easy enough to understand. If you want to see that again, you can go into a link on YouTube, FMB TV, or our fan page on Facebook, uh, FMB Classic Classes, or our FMB Classic Classes.co.za website. Next week, we're looking at the problem that many teams have, which is trying to make holes in an efficient defense. This masterclass was brought to you by Momentum.